first, if everyone could please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you and good evening. Welcome to this, the celebration of the Rutland High School's graduating class of 2022. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to recognize and to thank the whole team of people who make today's events possible. It is quite an undertaking to put on an event such as an event of this size. Rebecca and Kayla, Jamie, Anne, Steve Sampson, the entire maintenance department, and a whole team of people too numerous to list. Thank you all for your extra efforts to make today special for both the seniors and their families. Thank you. Wow, Rutland High School's class of 2022. Here you are, you've made it. You are here and joined tonight by Rutland High School's class of 1972, ladies and gentlemen. Here at Rutland High School, we have been doing this graduation thing since 1858. Stop and think about that for just a moment. Not 100 years ago, but over 160 years ago. And that's a really long time. Do you know who the President of the United States was? Mr. Olson, he's a history guy. I didn't know either, I had to look it up. It was James Buchanan. He was the President just before Abraham Lincoln. And if you stop and pause for a moment, you can just think about those graduates back then, the class of 1858, the first graduating class of Rutland High School. How, how similar it is to your experience, but at the same time, how different. Here they are, class of 58, best in the state. Woo! As they go. <laughs> and then they would peel out of the parking lot in their horse-drawn carriage. <laughs> I took some time this morning and I went back and I looked at the graduation program from 1858, which we actually still have in our library. You see names as you look at those lists that have a familiar ring to them. There's a Chaffee and a Pierpoint. There's a Dyer and a, and a Charles Mason. There's an Elizabeth Billings, there's a McClure, just like we have. All members of the class of 58, 1858, and familiar names to us today, they had a lasting impact on their community, our community. 
you can imagine those graduates at that time feeling like they had the answers. They knew what to expect and what was coming. They had seen the latest in modern technology that was coming. That year, 1858, was the year of the first transatlantic cable that allowed for instantaneous communication between two continents for the first time. It was one person at a time. Gray's Anatomy was published. Dr. Bove, I'm sure you know Gray's Anatomy. It was a book before it was a TV show. In May, just before graduation, Minnesota was admitted to the, as the 32nd state of the union. Our country was growing. Things were going great for the class of 58. They had things really figured out. Perhaps not so much. Fast forward just a few years, North would battle South, and those same graduates would be living in a country that was, and I quote, engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived, so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. It was Abraham Lincoln who said that at Gettysburg. Change happens. Adversity is going to happen. They didn't see it coming at the time, but it happened anyway. Now that class, the class of 1858, they persevered and they endured hardship and they went on to do great things. Collectively, they put one foot in front of the other, they moved forward and they thrived. That country so conceived did endure and here we are today. I want you, the graduating class, to remember back for just a moment to the first day of your freshman year. You had navigated the trials and tribulations of middle school, and you had arrived at high school. The big questions were, who would you sit next to at lunch? Where is Lab 3 anyway? And will I play basketball or will I run indoor track? Things were great. You knew what to expect. In March of your sophomore year, you left school and you didn't return for three months unexpected. Suddenly it was remote learning. You didn't see it coming, but it happened anyway, and you couldn't sit next to anyone at lunch, except maybe your siblings at the kitchen table, because they too had been sent home. The science lab was a link on your computer. It wasn't great, but you, the class of 2022, you endured. You endured the challenges of the pandemic by putting one foot in front of the other, and you completed your education under difficult circumstances. That belongs to you. Change happens and adversity happens even when it's not expected. You, this class, had a high school experience that was unlike any in the last hundred years. You overcame adversity. And here's the part I hope you most remember. You overcame that adversity and you are better for it. You are a class who can look back at your high school experience as having done something that no one else ever had to do. Fast forward now to the first day of this year, your senior year. The first day back in the building. I don't know if you remember, but I said to you three simple words. We need you. We need you to be the leaders of Rutland High School because we had a student body that had not had to coexist for a year and a half. We needed experience. We needed you. We needed you to set the example, and you did. You brought the student section back to life. Yeah. 
you showed younger students what it means to be a member of a school community. You held the first prom in three years. Thank you for all that you did. Now, as you prepare to commence the rest of your life, I will say to you again, we need you. Rutland needs you to lead and to set an example for the larger community. You've done it before, and we know that you can do it again. We believe in you. That's why we're here celebrating you. In closing, I wish to close with an invitation. I said to you earlier today, right here at rehearsal, that I wanted you to take this moment and to pause and to enjoy it. I said to you that you will never graduate from high school again. And I realized later in the afternoon that that is not entirely true. Right now, I want every member of the class of 2022 to mark your calendars. Please note this date. Thursday, June 16th, 2072. <laughs> you are invited to join the Rutland High School Class of 2072 to receive your 50-year Golden Diploma. Let's see what you can do between today and that day. Thank you. Now, I am pleased to introduce Mr. Bill Olson, Superintendent of Schools, for the presentation of the Golden Diplomas to another great class, the Rutland High School Class of 1972. Thank you, Mr. Schollinger. Good evening. My name is Bill Olson. I'm the Superintendent of the Rutland City Public Schools. And welcome everyone and congratulations to the class of 2022 and to your families and thanks as well to all the educators who supported you on your journey. Now when you were coming in this evening, I turned to Catherine and I said, boy Catherine, your class is a little rowdy. <laughs> and I said, Catherine, if you were down there, it would be a little bit rowdier. <laughs> so, speaking of bringing the student section back to life. So right now I want to recognize another group of graduates, many of whom have hair coloring similar to mine. We said we were not going to talk about age, right? I, that's it. No. Rutland High School recognizes our 50-year class at each graduation. We are happy to have the class of 1972 back together in the great community of Rutland. And we want to honor them with 50-year golden diplomas. We have 38 alumni with us, representing seven states and the province of Quebec. And I just got to spend a few minutes with them in the library at the high school, just a few minutes ago. And they were talking about the music of the time. They said Neil Young, The Stones, Emerson Lake and Palmer, David Bowie. And I said, oh, these guys are great. What a great class. <laughs> So with the help of board chair Allison Knott, allow me to present the names of our honorees from the great class of 1972. First traveling all the way from Quebec, Roy Ati. From Rockland, Vermont, Kathleen Woods Allen. From Colchester, Vermont, Cheryl Tucker Anderson. From 
from Essex Jun Junction, Vermont, Diane McLeod Arthur. <laughs> from North Clarendon, Joanne Marie Bursaw Severance. <laughs> from Center Rutland, Dr. Ernest Bove. Now, excepting for Mr. Scott Rush, who is in Lakewood, Colorado right now, in FaceTiming us through his sister, Holly Brush Webb, RHS class of 69, we have Elizabeth Franzoni, class of 22, accepting this diploma. <laughs> From Plainville, Mass., Deborah Carpenter. From Rutland, Jacqueline Louise Burton Zahar. From Rutland, Don Ransom Daly. From West Rutland, Edward Gilman. From Bayonet Point, Florida, David Gregory. Also from Bayonet Point, Florida, what a coincidence, Paula Gregory. From Essex Junction, Vermont, Lois Ann Jones. From Spicewood, Texas, Mark Johnson. From Epping, New Hampshire, Barbara Jane Johnson. May. From Rutland, Ramona Mayhew. From Rutland, Edward Merritt. From South Burlington, Linda Pierce Mickle. From West Rutland, Elida Todd Muska. From Winnebago, North Carolina, James O'Neill. From Pittsford, Deborah LaJoy Payne. From Williston, Vermont, Joanne Pitanello Ingalls. From Bomazine, Vermont, Richard Regimbo. From Florence, Vermont, Alan Roberge. From Rutland, Mary Ruseki. From West Rutland, Denise Senecal. From Brandon, Dorothy Stapleton. From South Burlington, Margie Stern Hackett. From Rutland, Karen Pelfi Tardif. From Kernersville, North Carolina, Joanne Wagner. From Rutland, Michelle Wallet. From Rutland, Raymond Washburn. From Springfield, Vermont, Randall Wigan. From Shrewsbury, Vermont, Wayne Temple Wilson.
From Woodstock, Carol Martin Wood. And from Manchester, Connecticut, Tracy Zeller. So we thank the class of 1972 for joining us this evening. And now, we will write you a pass to be excused from class so you can head off and continue your reunion festivities. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Catherine Moore, the class of 2022 Vice President. I have the pleasure of introducing my fellow classmate Sophie tonight. Sophie Anderson has been involved with many extracurricular activities throughout her high school career, including Mock Trial, Key Club, You Matter Club, National Honor Society, and other various student organizations. She is passionate about, passionate about being an advocate for the Asian American Pacific Islander community, as well as other political issues that are close to her heart. She has previously served as Vice President and Secretary on behalf of the Class of 2022, as well as being the Student Representative for Policy on the Executive Board. Sophie plans to study psychology at Simmons University in the coming fall in Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you, and now, Sophie Anderson. Hello, family, friends, faculty, and fellow graduates. Thank you, Catherine, for my introduction, and I just want to say I am honored to be standing in front of all of you speaking to you today. I would like to start by saying that I am so incredibly proud of this class and what we have achieved this year and the past three. I can gladly stand before you and recognize the class of 2022 as a class of forward thinkers and a group of leaders that stand up for what they believe in. One thing that has always been clear from the very first day of high school was our ability to transcend our differences for the same purpose. That purpose being to cultivate a passionate, diverse, and resilient community of critical thinkers who learn with purpose, create innovative and responsible solutions, and lead lives of integrity. This vision statement that our school goes by has guided us all on our journey through high school, whether we knew it or not, during sports, academics, and extracurriculars. The one part of this vision statement that always struck a chord within me was cultivating a passionate community for students. I had never known a school that held passion to the same standard as academic achievement. The more I thought about it, the more inspired I felt 
I had always overlooked this tangible passion all of those motivational posters hung up in classrooms would talk about. And just recently, I came across one of these quotes that you might see on a poster. Adriana Girdler once said, every single person has a purpose and it is our job to connect with that purpose and live our passion. What is our passion? Passion starts when we're younger, when we were asked that same question over and over again. So what do you wanna be when you grow up? Now, I'm sure your answers have changed drastically from the time when you were six years old to now, but I ask that you imagine a time when you were younger where you were dead set on your destined path. Some kids I know would have said an astronaut while others were set on becoming the first female president. For me, my dream job was not a firefighter or a veterinarian. My set course in life was to become a hairstylist. I mean, come on, what's not to love? There was nothing I looked forward to more than sitting in that tall, spinny chair and feeling like the coolest person in the world with my brand new haircut. And it was as simple as that. I felt happy in those moments, and so obviously that's what I wanted to spend the rest of my life doing, supplying that happiness to others. That was my passion. See, when we're young, we have this amazing ability to listen to our passions and believe wholeheartedly that we can achieve them. It's that little voice in our head pushing us to chase after what we want. It is a whisper of a passionate future. But this whisper that children hear from a young age begins to get drowned out by reality and we start to move on from those silly passions we once dreamt about. And just like that, it seems, as teenagers, we begin to lose this ability to hear the whisper we once did. And for a long time, I believed this. I was passionate about things, yes, but never like I used to be. But as I've watched my peers grow through these past four years, I've begun to disagree with the idea that we have lost this whisper. I started to pick up on the passion I felt had disappeared. It exudes from each and every one of us and is almost palpable. Whether we're in the stands together at the football field, screaming in celebration at another win, or all working together in class, trying to figure out the difference between a derivative and an integral, which I still can't tell. Sorry, Lurt. <laughs> we made our passion tangible, and that is what makes this class so special. We have the incredible ability to hear that whisper of motivation once again. And if you decide to take away one thing from my words today, let it be this. I urge you to take advantage of the passion learned from your peers over the past four years. My message may be incredibly cliched, but it still rings true. Tune into this whisper and never let that tangible passion escape you. Our legacy that all of us leave here today is the product of that passion. So be proud of it. Continue nurturing that unmistakable ardent outlook that has carried us through high school into your futures. Congratulations to the class of 2022, and I wish you all the best of luck on your journey ahead. Thank you. by Sophie. Can we give her another round of applause? Right. Now I'm honored to introduce our class president, Isabella Lefemina. Isabella has been an avid participant in student government since her days in Rutland Middle School. 
Her presidency these past few years have been some of her favorite memories in high school. Isabella has also served as the student school board representative for the past two years where she has been very vocal for social equality. Her leadership in the student senate has also put her at the center of student decision making. The leadership skills she's gained at RHS are one she wishes to bring to college with her in the fall at St. John's University in Queens, New York, where she will be studying law. Thank you all for coming to support the class of 2022, not just tonight, but for all four years. Without further ado, Isabella Lefemina. Thank you, Catherine, for your great work this year as Vice President, and thank you all for having me today. Welcome, Class of 2022, and to our family and friends. It's been a bumpy road, but here we are four years later. COVID wasn't very kind to us, but it's made us more resilient nonetheless. From fully remote to in-person and hybrid, I've always felt like our class had a true community of collaborators. Between football games under the lights with the best student section leaders possible, to raising money for families in need, our class really knows how to step up to the plate. I remember the day I received my lunch code in elementary school that had the added numbers 2022 at the beginning. I had no idea what this could possibly mean, so I was rudely awoken when I found out that this would be my graduation year. Each school year, I wished it all away so that summer would come because who doesn't love going outside and getting a little bit more sunburnt than the day before? 2022 seemed so far away at the time, like I had my whole life to get to this day. Yet, here I am. We could talk about all the things I regret doing or the things I wish I'd pursued, but I'd much rather talk about the upsides of this journey because every aspect of my life has brought me to this day. I was recently told that no one ever complains that a graduation speech is too short, so I'll try to keep it brief. There's too much to say about RHS and the RCPS system as a whole. I mean, we have been here for what simultaneously feels like 30 years, yet also 30 seconds. That's probably the funniest part about graduating. We were all complaining about going to school these last few weeks, but now we wish for them back. But how could we not? RCPS has the best group of students and staff around. I'm sure we all remember Mr. Olson's conch shell that sounded the commencement of vacations, or Colby Mead's wonderful morning announcement appearances, and Mr. Haga, who created alternative projects to further education, like Barbie bungee jumping, and not to mention his legendary rip sticking, or Mr. McDonough's AP discussions about Zendaya, and Ms. Farkas' stories about her brother's rock band. And I'd hate to forget one of the best memories I've had around high school, when my best friend Olivia won prom queen. I've made such memorable relationships here at RHS with the most unique staff and students. Like Mr. Lertola, also known as DJ Derivative, who taught the hardest class I've ever taken. And don't get me started on Izzy Crossman, who brightens my day by saying hello at any chance she can. We've had our ups and downs these past few years, but RCPS truly cultivates a resilient community of critical thinkers who learn with a purpose, as our school initiative states. Now, I don't want to pretend that I have this whole real world, high school to real world transition figured out, but I do know a thing or two, thanks to the amazing mentors I've had at Rutland High School. So, I've developed five rules for success, and I know that sounds cheesy, but please listen for five minutes and you'll be glad. Number one, always set multiple alarms. Some of us have a hard time waking up for school or work, but that's not quite my point. Life is too short to sleep through it all, so you have to set goals in order to move closer to your destiny. It may seem tedious, but all you have to do is take it one alarm at a time. And please, do not hit the snooze button. Don't wait to do the things that make you happy. Like I said, time moves inexplicably fast, so use it while you can. Number two, send thank you cards to those who give you things. My grandmother always told me, 
hey, Aunt Mary Lou isn't going to think you appreciate your gift if you don't let her know. I really took that one to heart, Grandma. It's important to communicate your appreciation to those who have helped you move closer to your goals, like teachers, parents, or friends, anyone who has made a significant impact on your life. It may not be in the form, excuse me, it may not be in the form of thank you notes, but it should always be with loads of gratitude. Because the next time you need something, they will be more than willing to, to lend a hand. And again, thank you cards are important in a literal sense if you want Aunt Mary Lou to send you a gift next year. <laughs> Number three, floss once a day. I know it can be tough to get into a rhythm, but it'll pay off in the long run. If it's important to you, put in the time to make it something you do consistently. You have to make time for yourself because you are the, you, the only you you'll ever get. Whether it be music, sports, exercising, make it a daily habit and set time aside. Of course, floss once a day too. Every dentist thanks you. Number four, by guessing by God, as my grandmother always says, as we cooked up a new dish. You aren't going to know what it's like until you try it. It's important to measure with your heart and use your gut to make the right decisions. Your whole life will not be exactly like high school. You may go on to college or the military or the workforce, but the struggles you encountered in Rutland High School will not be the same as the ones you must overcome in adult life. You must take the skills you've gained here and apply them differently based on the situations you find yourself in. Add your own spice to everything you do, and remember it's okay to mess up. This is where you'll learn the most. But in terms of cooking, please refer all questions to my grandma Carol because she is the true master chef here. Number five. Don't follow Google Maps, drive where your heart takes you. Maybe your path will change along the way, but no matter what, choose the journey that makes your soul happy. Don't worry what anyone else thinks. Because at the end of the day, it'll be you that's stuck in your life, in your job, in your town, no one else. Your own happiness and success should come before what other people might think of you. Besides, it's just life. So take whatever side street you decide will get you to your destination best. Well, now that you've locked in those five ideas, I had one more point to make. You may not have been friends with everyone, but it's still hard to say goodbye to those we've spent four years with, some even 13, from kindergarten to walking the stage and shaking hands. Who knows, you may have made an impact on someone's life without even knowing it. So, don't forget my five rules, and don't forget to be kind to as many people as you can, because you never know what might change someone's life, including yours. To close, I'd like to read a quote that has stuck with me throughout my education. By the way, it took a lot of effort not to quote that one Taylor Swift song, 22, seeing our present circumstances. Fearlessness means taking the first step, even if you don't know where it will take you. It means being driven by a higher purpose that, rather than applause. It means knowing that you reveal your true character when you stand apart more than when you stand with a crowd. Be fearless. Be the last person to accept things as they are and be the first person to stand up and change them for the better. Thank you all again and congratulations to the class of 2022. pleased to introduce our commencement speaker this evening. Jonathan Reynolds graduated from Rutland High School in the class of 2002. Dr. Reynolds was a National Honor Society member and four-year Tri-Scholar athlete. He played football and was a thrower on the indoor and outdoor track teams where he was part of a state championship teams in two, each sport his senior year. After graduation, he went to the University of Connecticut, where he earned a, his Doctor of Pharmacy degree in 2008. Later that year, he returned to Rutland and began working at the Rutland Regional Medical Center as a staff pharmacist. Jonathan rose through the ranks and advanced to Vice President of Clinical Services in 2019, where he now oversees operations for many of the hospital's clinical departments. We are so honored to have Dr. Jonathan Reynolds here with us this evening, so please give him a warm welcome.
thank you for that great introduction. I see a lot of fans going out there, so I promise to do my best to uh, make this quick. So, good evening, everybody. It's an honor to be here tonight, speaking to all of you. To graduating class, I've sat in your seats. I know the emotions you are feeling and have experienced them too. This is a big accomplishment, not only for each of you, but for your families, teachers, mentors, coaches, and our entire community. Tonight, you've achieved a milestone. As you turn the page to begin a new chapter in your life, cherish your memories, your time and education here, your experiences, and especially those with your families, classmates, and friends. Most of all, enjoy this moment. Before I get into the heart of, the, of my speech, I'd like to acknowledge how proud I am to be here tonight as a representative of the 1,800 employees at Rutland Regional Medical Center. Uh, there's many here tonight. As we look back on, those, on, on the past two years, we're especially honored to have been able to serve our community in the capacity that we did. Most importantly, when we didn't know up from down, I'm proud of the tenacity and determination that got us through such a challenging time. Personally, I, I want to also thank those here tonight that invested in me during my time at RHS and helped to set me on a track for, on a track for success. I specifically want to note that I'm a Yes Plan success story. It was because of Yes Plan that I'm in the career I'm in, all thanks to the School to Work program offered. I'm forever in debt to the teachers and coaches of RHS that offered me experiences that molded me into who I am today. Now to the RHS graduating class of 2022. I'm just a 38-year-old millennial still trying to figure things out just like you. But I'd like to impart what I, can, what I can about two specific things that I've learned along the way. The first thing is this, change is inevitable and you must embrace it. As humans, we don't like change. The path that you think you're embarking on after RHS will likely not be the path that you end up on five years from now. The exciting part is that you'll end up doing things and accomplishing things you can't even imagine right now. Furthermore, the class of 2022 you have a leg up because you were forced to manage change during the pandemic. Remote, semi-remote, hybrid, sports and extracurricular activities, to no sports, no activities, back and forth, constantly pivoting. Looking back, it certainly was not the best of times, but the silver lining is that you faced immense change that will make the future changes in your life easier to handle. The experiences of the past two years have made you stronger than you might realize. Your resiliency and the ability to adapt, pivot, and do things differently will serve you well. Your path may not yet be clear, but I'd encourage you not to be frustrated by that. Rather than being frustrated by change, expect it as a necessary part of your future growth. When you're open to change and trust yourself and others, the possibility for progress and success are endless. When your path is unclear, take one step at a time. Just keep going. You will grow and learn and redirect along the way. When the pandemic hit in March of 2020, it changed the way Rutland Regional took care of our patients and our community. In a matter of days, the jobs that we were doing and the teams of people we were working with changed dramatically. Many employees needed to learn how to do their jobs remotely. Many were assigned to different tasks, to different teams, to different areas of the hospital where their skills were needed, all with one goal in mind keeping our community safe and healthy. It was a hectic, difficult time. Things didn't, go always, things didn't always go as planned. There was frustration, fear, and people were tired. But as teams do with determination, resiliency, and support from the greater community, we kept moving forward. Change came constantly over the past two years with the need to create new plans and strategies. Having to create different methods for achieving routine tasks required our hospital employees to adapt, learn new roles, and work together. Change was the constant. And through the challenges, we learned new skills and abilities that made us a stronger hospital through a stronger group of united individuals. Now that leads me into the second thing I've learned along the way, which in my opinion is one of the most valuable traits an individual can possess. That is consistency. 
Consistency is dedicating yourself to your goals and staying focused on the details and steps and steps necessary to achieve success. In the future, when I'm interviewing you for a job, I want to know about the type of person you are and if you're a good fit for our team. It's not always about being the best or the smartest or the quickest. For me, it's the person who can grind, who can show up each and every day, who is the most resilient, who is the most dependable. When the going gets tough, who has the fortitude to push on? Being consistent ignites your path to success. It means showing up and working hard every day, being present and always doing your best, constantly improving, learning, developing, and achieving personal growth while working with others to do your part for the greater good. Grinding forward. Consistency will invite change that will open new doors and new opportunities for you. When these opportunities come, grab them before they vanish because the next opportunity is never guaranteed. Through consistency, you'll be the person that everybody wants on their team, which in the real world is priceless. At Rutland Regional, teamwork is cornerstone to our everyday success. As you know, we were tasked with leading the change and vaccinating our community. The collaboration was considerable and everyone needed to consistently do their part to make the whole thing work. And we did. This would, have been, this would have been impossible without great teams, dedicated individuals who showed up every day and did their best for our community. I share this to drive home the point that in our careers and in life, we all have a different role to play. Being consistent and working with others will guide your path and provide you with meaningful and rewarding opportunities. As you find your stride, challenge yourself Challenge yourself and those around you to do better and be better. Be an active and valuable member of the organizations where you choose to work and in the communities you choose to call home. Now I'll close with this. If you look around you, this commencement ceremony is just as much a celebration for you as it is a celebration of the investment the community has made in you. I'd ask you to reflect on that and acknowledge everything that countless people did in service to you to help get you to this very day. Since many of you are on a path that is still be determined, consider finding a path that is one of service to your community in return for all they've given you. And that could be a career in the military, public service like working with the fire and police departments, social and human services, local government, or a career in education. I challenge you to additionally consider a career in healthcare as a way to serve the community you live within. And any of you out there are interested in healthcare but don't know where to work, don't know where to look, excuse me, please reach out to me. Currently, Rutland Regional has over 472 jobs ranging from clinical to administrative. You don't have to be a clinician to work in a hospital. You can be an accountant, a chef, an electrician, or even a data analyst and still contribute to patient care. Hospitals are many communities within themselves with a variety of jobs that may end up interesting you. That may interest you. As you leave this arena tonight, as graduates of Relton High School, feel proud of what you've accomplished. Build on the foundation that your school, your family, and this community have helped you to establish. Relton High School has prepared you with the same grit and determination that has helped me in my journey. You're ready for the next step. Embrace change, be consistent, persevere, grind when things get tough, and never underestimate what you can do. Thank you. the best part. To all those here assembled, I hereby certify to you with the utmost confidence and respect that these candidates assembled before you have successfully completed the requirements for graduation from Rutland High School. They have worked hard 
and overcome many, many challenges to earn the diplomas that they receive today. They are the product of our dedicated faculty and of their proud parents. I respectfully present to you the Rutland High School Class of 2022. Congratulations. Um, on behalf of the Rutland City Board of School Commissioners, I congratulate the graduates of the Class of 2022. As your high school years have come to a close, you may sit in your chairs tonight, thinking of this ceremony as an ending. I challenge you to picture yourself instead sitting on a precipice of change. You have spent years under the watchful eyes and nurturing care of your families and our schools. This community has provided you with a solid foundation to grow on. What the next layer is, is up to you. There will be successes and failures, wins and losses, ups and downs. Your journey lies ahead. I hope you will all stay curious, drive yourselves to keep learning, and wherever your life takes you, learn to enjoy the ride. Congratulations, graduates. Sophie Elizabeth Anderson. <laughs> Isabella Marie Lefemina. <laughs> Catherine Brooke Moore. Molly R. Abatel. <laughs> Jacob Allen Acker. <laughs> Zoe Elizabeth Agner. Abed Alawi. <laughs> Veda Lynn Alberico. <laughs> Catherine Isabel Alexander. Matthew John Anderson. <laughs> Olivia Marie Andrews. <laughs> Zakaria Arshad. Haley Jade Aspinwall. <laughs> Gerald Matthew Austin. <laughs> Sean 
Raymond Babb. Sean Oren Baker. Cameron A. Bythro. Regan Charles Bird. Bradley M. Bishop. Sarah Ray Block. Ruben S. Bostock. Micaiah M. I. Boyle. Jillian Maria Faustina Bradley. Eliza Rose Bridge. Chase A. Bristol. Riley Jean Brown. Cyrus Matthew Brown. Vincent Lee Armand Burke. Jacob Xavier Burton. Justin L. Buzno. Olivia Margaret Calvin. Alexander J. Barrett. Robert Raymond Can. Macy J. Celentano. Daphne P. Cisneros. Braden C. Clark. Edwin Brown Clark.
Clough. Emerson Hope Kaludi. Jillian M. Cook. Ethan James Corey. Jack C. Coglin. Ian R. Corsell. Jeremy Croft. Isabel Jean Crossman. Isabel J. Cushing. Trey John Davin. Anthony Joseph Downing. Owen M. Doobie Johnson. Quinn C. Duggan. Kelsey Ray Dupree. Bryce Joseph Dusablon. Bryce D. Dyer. Elizabeth C. Emmerich. Olivia Rose Einan. Alec Tower Figueroa. Matthew Michael Curtis Flanagan. Elizabeth Faith Franzoni. Haley M. Frederick. Emily E. Freeman. <laughs> Alexia Lynn Decato.
Brady Matthew Geisler. Caleb Gillespie. Emma Morgan Gilmore. Ava Marissa Gonzalez. Xander A. Gotlin. Hunter L. Green. Emily C. Grover. Ariana Isla Hall. Corrigan Hannah. Hebert. Eowyn Marie Hetzel. Abigail Elizabeth Hill. Henry Xavier Hogan. <laughs> Emma Jean Howland. <laughs> Noah Andrew Hubble. McKenna Lynn Hubert. Aiden Austin Robert Jenkins. Tyler R. Jerome. Koa Johnson. Colin Michael Joyce. Alyssa Noel Kennedy. Cameron B. Kinsman. <laughs> Menser Asko Karachich. <laughs> Isabel Dorothy Ladabush. Samuel David Lamb. <laughs> A 
Alexis A. Landry. Caden Jameson Lanzillo. Henry Lee. Elise Ann Lidstone. Deirdre Maris Lilly. Brianna L. Longley. Michaela Lowsby. Amy Lee. Cormac G. McLaughlin. Asher Maduro. Matthew David Magro. Christopher Ryan McGuire. <laughs> Philip Mahar. Taras Martin Mancinas Stempanenko. Bradley Joseph Maneri. Gloria M. Marino. Christopher Charles Mason. Faith Ann McClure. Amelia Erin McKenna. Alexa Isles McLaughlin. Tessa A. McLaughlin Leite. Colby. Arthur Mead. <laughs> Megan Grace Millette.
Jade Marie Mitchell. Tyler Alexander Mitchell. Jenna A. Montgomery Concha. Cody Morton. Cedra Moses. <laughs> Kyle Patrick Murray. <laughs> Liam Edward Maven. Zachary Charles Nelson. <laughs> Riley Robbins Norton. <laughs> Michael Ryan O'Connor. Haley M. L. Murray. Emma M. Osgood. <laughs> Benjamin R. Parker. <laughs> Boston Nicholas Coppola Paturi. Abigail G. Pilts. Yeah. Riley Joan Plant. Charlotte Elizabeth Pomeroy. Slade 
W. Prostemski. Bryce Paul Prezo. Devin Robert Reed. John Barclay Rice. Karan Dawood Richardson. Tahir Kawan Richardson. Samara Larie Rideout. Akira Mercedes Rolls Graham. Brendan B. Ryan. Jason Thomas Ryan. Tamara J. Sabatka. Olivia Sanchez. Nina Jean Savage. Jeremiah Lewis Shutt. Braden Wayne Shelton. <laughs> Olivia Eileen Shipley. Callum Boyd Smathers. Gracie Stahura. Chaska M. Stannard. Abigail Grace Studley. Mia Nicole Sullivan.
Christopher Kenneth Sweezy Hurst. Angelica Olivia Taylor. Savannah Marie Taylor. Jeanette Sarcy Lanzar Teachman. Tyler Scott Turian. Chase May Thorner. Joshua E. Tuttle. Jevin Valenti. Cassidy Haven Veldi. Gabe S. Vitagliano. Cody Robert Warren. Lily R. Watson. Emily LaPena Wigmore. Dylan Wilcox. Sydney Grace Wood. Eliza M. Wolf. Jasmine Danielle Wright. Fane Wyman. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of 2022. Please rise for the singing of our alma mater.
ask that our graduates now take their tassels from the right hand side and go to the left hand side to signify their graduation. Congratulations. I don't know. 